Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Hello Fan. Hello, welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our League of Ireland show. We've been a bit uh, touch and go in terms of the League of Ireland the last kind of couple of weeks with the international stuff, the UEFA for Nation League games and stuff like that. And all that drama. <laughs> Doom and gloom and negativity. It's good to go back to power football again, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was nice. Um, obviously, the league now is wrapped up and we'll, we'll talk about that game later on, but... Um, this just seems to be a bit of a you know feel good factor around the league at the moment. Yeah, there's like a it seems to be a handful of teams that have just let the handbrake off, and you know it's almost that the fact now that Dundalk have gone on to win it and secure it, and that's all official. That other teams, particularly Cork, seem to you know they've kind of been revitalised, and then look, we'll, I'm sure we'll speak about it a bit more later. But they seem to be going back with this fresh leak, uh, lease of life, and there's a small matter of a cup final around the window uh, as well. So yeah, no, it was a kind of a it was a refreshing off game week. Yeah, uh, the first game anyway. Speaking of teams that are are um, taking the, the foot off the gas, so to speak, Bray, um, Bowes smashed them five 0 Yeah, Denny was on fire by all accounts. Yeah, you know I'm delighted for Denny because we go down to Daily Mount a good bit of the time, and he does take a lot of stick. I think he does try his best to work for the team and albeit he might not have the uh, ability as much as some of the other strikers in the league and I'm talking about the top strikers. He is he is one of the, the best strikers in the league but I mean in terms of top, top strikers. Um, you know, he does a lot for the team as well and, you know, he's been a key part of this run that they've been going on, yeah, no, you know. Absolutely. So uh, for him to get four goals, I'm delighted for him personally. Um you know, he he came on the show and, and kind of gave gave us a chance quite early on when you know not a lot of people would. And he came on the show and 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 did a video with us. So I'm a, I personally am absolutely delighted for him anyway. And um, you know, I I, I like the Bowes team. I'm not gonna lie. From Shane Supple right up to to Diddy and uh, and whoever normally plays off him, and Keith Ward's usually the number ten. But I mean, they're Keith Long's really creating a, a brilliant side there. And I mean, you look around the team, you got um. Daryl Lee signed a new contract the other day as well. Um, you have Casey in there as well. Uh, Ian Morris, you know. Then you you move into mid midfield. JJ Loney's been a revelation since yeah, he moved been, into yeah. midfield, you know. And then, you know, moving around all, all over the park. Uh, Dan O'Kelly on the right. He's been excellent, he's been excellent since yeah, he's moved since from Bray. Really, you know, yeah. it's talking him going over to England. I think it was Bolton a ru- rumor to be, kind of. Uh, looking to take one also Rovers also Dundalk and also Cork so yeah, it just shows how well he's been doing he made yeah. a show at Cork that game we were at as well when they, yeah he ran them ragged yeah, what was it 5-2 or 4-2 yeah it was, it was only it was only well back there yeah. before the cup point, uh, the cup semi-final sorry not the cup final um, so yeah look you're talking serious form that Bowes are in and you know you, you, you gotta say fair play to them and fair play to the job Keith Long's doing because you know they were they were tipped to be down and yeah they were tipped for doom and gloom and you know they're they're a team that you'd be very excited for you know we don't want to wrap off the season just yet but in terms of looking forward and looking to next season but they yeah. also had a massive result in the Iron Brew Cup and Shane yeah. Supple was the was the hero I talk there. about hero f- Captain Fantastic and all that you know but again another another guy who gave us a chance yeah. early days and a really nice fella too saved two penalties and scored one or something like that it was something outrageous you know it was real kind of Roy the Rover stuff um, but yeah no you'd be very excited looking forward to next season with them and they're a team if they keep evolving like they have been you know they could be really really exciting next season yeah and another lad that we did mention who actually scored the other goal was Kevin Devaney who again is very good on the left hand side of uh, this new kind of formation they have, and I, I just like seeing them play to be honest. And then there's Buckley in there as well. I mean, you go through the whole team, Stokes there's as well, yeah, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of quality in there. And the, the key thing will be for them to hold on to these players now, and that's that's the big the big thing kind of lurking around. You, you, you're looking at all these you know scenarios around the league, and there's already transfer rumors coming in left, right, and center, and you're like, oh, you know, and you're like. Oh, that that'll be a nice move here or there, you know. So, you know, again, you, you talk things kind of happening. Keith Long may he, they'd be struggling to keep hold of him now as well, you know. Perhaps, yeah, he's definitely going to be. If I kind of hire a club, but it's only if Cork get rid of. Yeah, I was going to say if, if you're Cork and you're looking around the league and Caulfield may whatever happens there, I suppose the way, the nicest possible way to put it is there will be a discussion about that position over the summer whether he moves on or not. I, d- I think he'll stay. I think he, I think he likes what he's doing there, and he he invests in a lot of youth, and he's happy to bring them through. Yeah, like you look at it, I think 
was it a couple of weeks ago now? I think the the financial side of uh, things were kind of leaked a little, but in terms of Cork, when they were like saying that look, they're going to have to cut X amount of the of the wage bill for next season, and that's probably going to have to get trim the squad a little even finer. And like he came out, and you know a lot of managers would moan and use that as an excuse, really. But he was like, yeah, no, that's fine, you know, so be it and get on with it. That kind of to me struck a, a guy that probably was going to stay on and or definitely wanted to stay on. Yeah. But um, I suppose just to to wrap it back, if you if they do decide to look to look elsewhere, he's probably one of the definitely going to be on that short list of you know if you're looking around the league of young fresh managers who they you'd be looking for or who would come in and, and fit them. That's that's how well he's been doing. I suppose he's also within uh within the you know top managers for manager of the year, which we we, we will be doing a, a video on that. I was going to touch yeah. on that at the end, but yeah, we might as well say it now. That something we, really excited we we're just talking about on the way over actually. Um, we're gonna like it's coming towards the end of the season, so we, this is something where we'd like to get the fans and you guys to, to interact a lot. And you know, we've all watched games all throughout the season. And we'll, what will we do? We'll we'll do a short list for like each position. We'll try and pick a a team of the year, uh, overall player of the year, young player of the year. Manager. And then we'll do a full, a, yeah. a full, do a full team. And then we'll come into the studio and we'll we'll have like a fans versus <laughs> pundits. Uh, yeah, but we'll do a short list. We'll give yeah. well the top five names. We'll do we'll come in and we'll we'll discuss it as the top five, and then we'll go you know vote it out. We'll have a panel of four, and we'll have uh, vote it out, and we'll do that with manager of the year. We'll do that with um, yeah, player, yeah, young yeah. player, goal of the season, and then. The, so, uh, the team, team of the team, year. Yeah, so I always love these type of stuff because I love you, them too. Yeah, you get a lot of debate, and then you get a bit of tribal debate as well. You know, say for instance, the Cork guys aren't going to vote for you, and know, won't have a Dundalk guy in the team, and they'll get get all their people to all their fans, whatever, to vote. Yeah, no, but it, it definitely should be a a good uh, just talking point and discussion point the next the next yeah. while. Oh, and I'm looking forward to. And yeah. um, you touched on Cork then. Uh, we might as well uh, yeah. go on to their game. They obviously won three 0 Away up in good the result, up, good result up there. Um, Derry are having a bit of a wobble. The uh, so like they go win a cup, then they could come and then tonight now we're obviously finding out that they're after losing to. Yeah, it's uh, been a bad Bray. couple. Of, yeah, it's been a bad couple of days. Um, dare I say another team that probably will be looking at a manager change. They'll just be looking at a whole change in general. But yeah. do you know it, it all goes back to. Uh, you know, the sacking of, of Graham Kelly. You haven't got a point since they sacked him. And again, Graham, really nice guy, and he's actually doing a lot. This is actually running a charity game on Sunday there for the Shamrock Rovers Legends. Um, if you want to check it out, we shared, we shared it on our Facebook there today. So any Shamrock Rovers fans that are watching, just make sure you check that out. There's some real legends there that you might want to. Uh, see, but credit to Graham, he's doing a tremendous yeah, he's doing a job. Huge, huge amount of work as well behind the scenes as well. Yeah, trying to stay involved in in the football scene and everything else. And there's also a anyone who pays the ticket gets to go uh, to a Q and A with uh, Paul McGrath, uh, which is at eight pm in the in the Noggin Inn. So there you go. But uh, yeah, no, look, um, Cork. I think yeah, you you touched on it already, and you said you know the the pressure's off now. Yeah. And I think that's. I think that's been a bit of a relief for them. I think, I think it has been, yeah. You, like, obviously, our graphic designer, Aaron, is, you know, he, he's part of a, a, a bit of a, what would you call it, a cult down there. And, yeah. you know, they're split. They're, I think, And I think they're split down the middle on whether Coffee stays or goes. It, it's funny, you, you speak to the likes of Aaron, who's very much get him out. It's like, like it's like a change. Wenger. Out, yeah, almost. it's almost a Wenger thing, isn't it, really? Um what happens? Who knows? Um, I, I don't think it's as bad as with Martin O'Neill, which one? But anyway, go on. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's no vocal assistant manager there either. <sighs> <laughs> Although they could probably could do it a bit of drama to distract uh, against the the off uh, on field results. I think he'll. I think there'll definitely be a big discussion, but I think he will stay. Um, the the cup final for for me for them is going to determine their season now, and it's very much a. Let's have one lash at these crowd. That how dare they take our title sort of thing, and you know the the cup final could be a real. I have a feeling it could be a real nasty kind of spiteful game. Uh, well, they usually are. We, yeah. we, we we said it many times. The rivalry is very like United and Arsenal back in the day. Yeah. You know, uh, in the nineties, kind of early two thousands. Uh, the Pat Hooven even said that as well in an interview. I think he's just quoting me at this rate. Yeah, but, uh, I think he is. Yeah, like who wouldn't? And but even then, <laughs> I think it was coming up to the. The league game in Turners Cross, 
Stephen Beat, he actually gave a, a very good uh, interview. I can't remember who it was, but he, you know, he kind of spoke about just the haters and how they would do anything to was stop. Was that after the court game when Delaney's uh, the back pass? I think it was and off the ball with Jamie Moore. I think it might have been, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it was a very honest. I, yeah, I like it, yeah. it was surprising because most of the time you get footballers that come out and it, you know they don't want to say anything to to give the opposition a, a, a you know stir or, you know. Or, put anyone out of line and usually you get the, the same old PR bullshit but here it was like no we hate them <laughs> we don't want to do anything I thought it was very honest and very refreshing yeah no, and, yeah. And, and, and that's the thing with the likes of B he raises his heart in his sleeve yeah. and he, he gives it his all in, uh, in most games that you watch him play you know what I mean and you know he is essentially playing out of position nearly every game for four very true, right yeah. back you know yeah. so um, but I mean going into it Barry McNamee gets his uh, a goal gets his all side yeah. then there was an own goal and then um, Daily butts, which for me sounds like something from The Simpsons. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like some something uh, where a uh, bat rings into Mo, and it's just can I get a can I get a will butts? We, will, Daily, we, will, will we move on to the next game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but look, Corker coming into yeah, form yeah. just the right time, and yeah. it's it's that reaction, it's that kind of as you said, the real kind of they've put a mark in the sand that almost it's a relief that the title is done. There's no pressure on them anymore and they're going to come into the cup final and give it a right good lash. Yeah, well, depending on the money that you get for the cup final in Europe or something like that, it could be vital. Like, well, they're already in Europe, I suppose. Yeah. But, I think uh, it's more pride more than anything at this stage, At this stage, yeah. Let us know what you think anyway about that in the comments. So we ha- would be interested to hear what you think uh, in terms of the cup final. We're not going to talk about the cup final no, in too much no. depth on ne- next week, so uh, just keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, then, on to the champions. Um, and... <laughs> they say we're not going to talk about the cook fan go straight on to the top <laughs> but uh, no look um, watching that I I was just sitting I, I, was, I was watching this game at home and I was just sitting there going please 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 break this record <laughs> I just I would love yeah. to see him break this record and then you know oh, he misses the penalty <laughs> and I was like you just oh, think no. it's not going to be one of these nights is it but he missed he, but, but, but because he had a couple of chances early on like very early in the game, he could have had three, I think, within about fifteen minutes. You know, yeah, he was a free header at one point, and you could just see by him because you know that's a sign of a, like a top class striker. He just doesn't stop. Like some strikers will let it get them, like oh, you know, oh, I missed and I'm not going to score. Like a lot of strikers w- would do that, but he he's like right next chance, next chance, and he is helped by what's around him. I mean, you look at the quality around him and. You know, you only have to look to the right in Mountney. He got two goals in that game and two very well taken goals too. Yeah, they're simply the best team in the league, best team in the country at the moment. They're like the Man City of 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 yeah, Ireland. Yeah, there's, there's that much of a. Remember, we went up to Oriel Park, I think, towards the start of the season. The and, Cork game. Yeah, and they bet Cork. Well, I think that, I think it only finished one nil. Who and it? Was it Hoop? And it was this shitty, scrappy goal, if I remember right as well. And Dundalk battered, and I mean. Battered Cork, like they battered them so much that you felt like there was going to be a circle punch where Cork got one against the run of play, but it, it was like come at that stage nobody was. It was very much a case of it was kind of fifty fifty or you know the two teams were so so close to each other in the top. Um, you'd water were flying as well, and you know it felt like a it felt like a big occasion, a big short term occasion that they've got you know three points ahead of Cork. Uh, and I felt like that was going to be a small gap, and I felt like they had to win every game. You know, the teams were that that close together, but since then, like they've just wiped wiped the park all together. And you know, it's interesting. You know, and we we spoke at the, the start about you know the international football and all the doom and gloom that's coming out of that, but it's so refreshing. And even I was reading over the weekend there as well, um, Stephen Kenny's notes and the, the program notes before the game, and look, he was pretty much saying. We have to get rid of this myth that just because players are from Ireland, I'm paraphrasing them a good bit here, but pretty much just because players are from Ireland doesn't mean that they can't play, you know, quality football. And you oh, look, they have skill or... yeah, exactly, yeah. and very much the polar opposite of what we hear, we hear from our national team manager, and that is reflected by watching Dundalk play. They they have a freedom about them. They they've they've uh, not 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 arrogance because. You know, we we know a lot of the team, and they're you know they're top they're quite they're, respectful. They're yeah. top, they're top guys, um, and a pleasure to deal with. Any time we've had any um, discussions with them or whatever, even just for any, to down to the small nature of having friendly chats with them, um, but they uh, once they get on that pitch, they're no they're, egos. Yeah, a, yeah, they're very much they they play. They're allowed to express themselves. They play quality football, and you know, um, I wish our national team would play. 
with that sort of freedom. You know, you watch the likes of McLinley since he's come back, it's been an absolute revelation. Um, Hooping, of course, is going to get all the closets and, and rightly Chris so. Chris Shields does a lot. Yeah, Chris Shields does a lot. He's amazing. Yeah, like, what a machine he has been and how effective he has been to that team all season. I mean, you look at it as well. I mean, you know, Brian Gatlin came back in and Daniel Cleary's been on the bench and we we raved for the first half of the season. We raved because about Because when he came down, I, I remember speaking to some Dundalk fans when, when he came. Obviously, like, cause I'm a Liverpool fan, so... I, I would have watched him. Oh, yeah. yeah, not that you never, no, no, ever, ever really stated, but I would have watched him a lot at underage, and I, you know, it's kind of in a way, it was kind of a little surprised that he didn't make the breakthrough at least at, say, championship level, but it didn't happen for whatever reason. He comes back, and I remember speaking to some Dundalk fans, kind of just at the start of the season, maybe a little before, you know how, you know, saying how great he was going to be, and they were like, nah, I'm not sure will he get in this team, and then he came in. I think it was that court game. I remember, like he was just winning yeah, header yeah. after Hell header. After. Granny issues. Yeah, yeah, and like everyone, you could see all the locals going, "Jesus, wow, this lad looks like a player." And you look, he thought he was going to go smash the league, but it's evidence just to show how strong they are that he's been kind of not struggling to get to get his game, but you know he's been out of the team, in and out of the team a little. It's just that quality. Gat- Gatlin's, you know, he's the captain. Then you know uh, when yeah. when Massey's not playing, yeah. and then Chris Shields is as well. So there's a lot of leaders in that it's team, you know, and there's warriors. And this, he, he, you got to give massive credit to the manager because he's yeah. like, he, they lost Christian at doors and early, on, early doors. And he uh, well, fun- not early doors, sorry. Recently, but he yeah. was fantastic at the start of the season. You go back to maybe... What they I don't think it was the start. It was kind of halfway through, wasn't it? When yeah. they lost to Waterford down in Waterford and there was a little bit of a wobble and everyone was like, oh, what's going to happen there now? He was fantastic. I remember even the... Was it the Cork game? He scored, scored, yeah. he scored up from the left-hand side. A beautiful finish. Yeah. Um, you know, he just said there was a couple of moments of magic throughout, and it was interesting to see in the celebrations afterwards. I think they had one of his shirts going around. Yeah, yeah I don't know uh, really he really definitely like whatever you know didn't didn't uh, play the whole of the season, but definitely left a, yeah, an, an, impression. an impression with the squad um, members there. But yeah, no, it's well deserved champions, and and um, a team that it's pleasure to say is, is champions of your country because of everything both we've discussed there on off field and the quality that they've shown on the pitch as well. Hundred percent. And you look around their team, you know, um, you know, Michael Duffy as well, and I'm delighted to say that he's signed a two year contract yeah. as well. So if he does go anywhere there will be a fee. And, you know, that's Dundalk have, have struggled. Macmillan, uh, McElhenney, um, they a lot of these players, Boyle, Horgan, they all left. You know what I mean, and they didn't get a lot of money, if any, um, for these players. And Stephen Kenny, to his credit, has to have to rebuild and rebuild and rebuild. And you do for, excuse me, you do forget. So well, it's, we, we don't, but some people might forget that you know, Huben had no preseason. He came in there. Yeah. He's hit the ground running. You know there was a lot of kind of competition for 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 places at the start because there was no real recognised striker. There was Taga Jumi. I don't know how to pronounce yeah, his name. Marco is his first yeah. name. Um, Ronan Murray, who he's kind of struggled to to nail down a first team spot. They were after getting Georgie Kelly from UCD. So they do have, you know, players in there that can come in. But you know, Huben just doesn't allow them to get in anymore. You know, it's it's just the case. You now he was saying to me before when he was on 18 goals yeah. just at the break that. You know he's been scoring a lot of doubles, but he's been being taken off because of his fitness. But now he's finishing games. You know, so I think, you know, and I think everybody who's watching, you know, maybe bar Cork fans would like to see him break that record. Yep. I think Cork fans might just be being spiteful, but yep. I'd say majority of them would like to see it just for the fact it's well, you know it's a record there that's been there for so long. Not, not if he does it in the cup final. <laughs> well, it's legal. Yeah, yeah so but sorry, yeah, but the, the total if he scores, I mean, sorry, I mean if he scores against them in the cup final, they won't be too. Yeah, well, <laughs> too, of course, too, but, too, too grateful. But yeah, no, I, I, I take exactly what you mean, hundred percent. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, like you, it's funny you speak about Hoop in there. You only have to spend a couple of seconds in his present to to see how focused. He is about the whole thing, and he's a humble guy too. Let's not forget. Uh, good, you know, he good he, goalie lad. He was down in Log Ray there over the weekend as well. I saw him from his um, uh, Instagram down the beautiful lakes there as well. You know, get, getting getting his recovery in, yeah. Very sentimental there. Yeah, John. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but now, like I was to say, we humble guy. Like he, I remember in that interview, and uh, you can check it. It is on, on YouTube. So he did say, you know, whether or not I finish with whatever amount of goals. You know, I said to him, I go, would you get 30? And he kind of smiled at me, as if to say, we'll see. Yeah. But, 
he did say it wouldn't have meant anything if they were didn't have a trophy at the end of the uh, end of the season. So he he didn't really care. He what he he's for a team, but also wants to score the, the most amount of goals, which is the perfect striker perfect for me. Combination, you know. It? And again, should be called up in my eyes and yours, I'm sure. Yeah, for, for, for absolute certain. For the Northern Ireland game, at least. But look, no matter how much we... But to be fair, the more we said it, the more it's been getting... The more people have been agreeing. Yeah, you even hear... Between the stripes. Of you, yeah, you hear... Even I think I've heard a little bit on Off the Ball as well. It's been a, talking about it as a discussion now. Um, so, yeah, call up Pat. Yeah. Speaking of Pat, Pat's... Uh, hey, I like what you did there. Um, they won four 0 down in Limerick. Limerick are struggling big time. I mean, we don't, we don't, we actually, like, to be fair, we don't really talk about Limerick or Brave just because a we don't really see them play, and b pardon my language here, but they've been. Sh- for, for that. It's a difficult one for them. So many young players, well documented issues, financial issues. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't even think it's their fault. Like, the, I like the manager, Tommy Barrett. Yeah, he's you know, as I say, I haven't really watched him, but you never hear them really, like, upsetting the odds or, or anything like that. You never really, they never really make you go, oh, you know what I mean? I mean you look at Pats or Bows and, you know, people were comparing Bows and Limerick to kind of being in the same breadth as them and stuff like that early yeah, doors. It's, it's difficult, though, even in terms of kind of, you you look if you compare like look at Pats, they have you know a well defined kind of football heritage for want of a better word you know for hardcore fans coming out where it's just a little bit more difficult there he's gonna trying to rebuild. So I'm being harsh, am I? No, I'm not. Well, uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's a, that's no, it's not. So, if no, I'm being I, harsh, I, I've been harsh. I, I, I don't mean that. I feel like I kind of am being harsh. Limit yeah. fans, you're watching. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way, but it just feels like something's missing there, and that's both kind of on and off the pitch. I think and. Yeah, it's just a like we sp- spoke to Tommy before earlier. I think it was up in Pats. Or was it was it was a balls up in Delhi moment? Yeah. Um, I was on to it on the stocks. Oh yes, I do indeed. Yeah. <laughs> that was a. You should have scored. That was a wonderful, uh, beautiful nil nil victory, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like they've struggled really. Like they've play like Limerick have played a lot of kind of they've tried to play a bit of decent football. They've just struggled. I think they've got blown off towards the. The last quarter of games, they've re- really, really struggled. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one there. Well, look, they need to really... St- They're in a rebuilding phase, aren't well, they? Well, they have got a playoff coming up against Finn Harps that yeah. they need to get their act together. Otherwise, yeah. they're going down. And, you know, Paddy McCourt is making a... Yeah, a and, you know, Finn Harps, you know, you couldn't have two teams. This usually happens when you have the team, the team kind of on the way up and the team on the way down. You know, Finn Harps, have, what was that new ground uh, or the... The Donegal Stadium. The, the money for the, the ground development and I think that's gonna be the name of it, the Donegal Stadium or City Donegal yeah, City Stadium. It just means a <laughs> no disrespect, another horrible uh, away venture for all the way up to the hills of Donegal if if they come through. Yeah, hang on a minute. That's I, I've a lot of good friends in Donegal, but that was a horrible. We haven't even done it this season. Yeah, I've been drove to Donegal a couple of times. It's a horrible drive, especially it's up there. We'd have to go up sometime. Yeah, anyway. geez, yeah, we'll need a week. <laughs> yeah, we got to one of the beaches. <laughs> um, well, so yeah. their, phys- their physio is a follower. Therese, shout out. She watches the show. Very good. Um, yeah, like, we'll, again, we'll talk about the playoffs, I'm sure, again, but that very much is a team on the way up and a team on the way down. And yeah, fancy, you'd fancy an upset, really, there, wouldn't you, nearly? Just on current form, if confidence alone. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, I always like, when I feel like a team hasn't given it their all, in that season, I'd like to see a team who are kind of pushing to come up. Obviously, always win. That's just that's just how I how I am. Um, you might feel differently about that, and you're entitled to. And so are you guys. <laughs> so let let me know. You know, if I'm being too harsh, it's gonna be let a me long, know. long long list of people to give out tonight. Well, the Cork fans. Ah, uh, look, you can't them. keep everyone happy. We try to keep everyone happy all season, and you know we've been neutral <laughs> enough. But you know, time to give credit where credit's due, and trying to yeah. put the boot in where the boot needs to be put in <laughs> at times. All right, but just let us know. Look, I'd, Look, I'll have it out with you. <laughs> we'll have a discussion. We'll all, get you on the show. I'll tell you what, there we come go. on the show. There we and go. you can tell point. us why Limerick have, haven't been S H I T E. Um, but Pats, four goals. Kevin Toner, who early on the season was would have been for me a contender for a centre back position yeah, in my exactly. team of the team of the year. Not so much anymore because they've slid off the rails. Yeah, it's um, a difficult one, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't think that's solely down to him. 
they haven't been scoring goals, and that's been the issue. Obviously, Jake Keegan gets a goal, but for me, he's not a he's not going to be the he's not going to be a Pat Hooban. He's not going to be a Graham Cummins. You know, or someone like that. Yeah, Pat's another one of these teams that played a lot of good football and um, defensively pretty sound. Uh, but just so many games have not dominated, but been on top for large periods and then just get dubbed because they just can't can't turn all that good play in, into goals. And without sounding like silly and repetitive, goals win games. And there's so many times there we've watched them, and it's so disheartening because they've done so well. And, it's a lovely place to go down and watch football. Every everyone's been so welcome. We've been down in past quite a lot, just the way the fixtures have. They're always asked, come back. Yeah, the way the, way the fixtures have fallen, and it's it's pretty easy for, for both of us from work to, to get to on a Friday evening. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's all changed there now. Great uh, cheeseburgers. Yeah, it's not bad now. Fan side there. Um, Sorry. <laughs> um, but like a new manager who's going to take that job. Um various names spouting around but what's wrong with the manager they have now Jer he's definitely in with a shout isn't it like will they keep winning games like this um, he's done himself no harm um, players know um, you know he kind of knows the system from before he knows it probably didn't work or you know they got sick of listening to Liam Buckley because he's been there so long but there was a, a lot of new faces there this season one being Sam Madden with the last goal um, and obviously there was no own goal but uh, yeah like I'd actually like to hear what, who, who the Pats fan I'm very would, curious to know because I could I could pick out a name like if I had to say anyone would be Keith Long but if I was Keith Long I wouldn't go anywhere no, I wouldn't, in that I wouldn't, scenario you, no disrespect you wouldn't move to Pats exactly uh, yeah. from Bowes there not that not that the Pats are a lesser club but they're no, kind of on par that, that project that he has built up yeah. and uh, so close to you know making that next step you know, there's all sorts of talks, you know, you've, you've everyone from Pat Fennell, I think, was mentioned, you know, even Kenny Cunningham was mentioned. Oh, I, I think he'd be a great important. Uh, Fennell or Cunningham? Uh, Cunningham. Yeah, like... But, the no, I, I, I do think, you know, if Jerry Jer O'Brien wants the job and continue, continues to go as he is, I, I think he's well within, his, well within a shout. Absolutely. But... Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear a bit more um, from the Pats fans just to see who you would like to go with because it's almost at that crossroads now where they've kind of, you know, they they went on that, that phase from under that late. Almost, and it's no bit disrespectful of dummies in that way, but it's almost like Wenger, like, you know, you go from being at the top from winning the league and just kind of peters away, peters away, where it's time for a change. And now it's so important to get that next manager right because that is, that's a decent bunch of, a uh, decent squad there. And if they can add to it. Yeah, absolutely. Because it seemed to it seemed to be a case where he was falling out with a lot of players, you know what I mean? And there is good players there, like Ryan Brennan's a very good player. People Pats fans don't believe me when I say this, maybe I'm being boy. I think Dean Clark's a great player for them. He is, yeah. I've watched him this season, I think he's he he's been very good for him on the left hand side. People are telling me otherwise tell me I'm delirious uh, and all this. They've obviously got Kevin Toner, uh Burmo, uh Matt Simon Madden. Brilliant, quality, quality um, back, yeah. you know, and there's players. Killian Brown's obviously good. He's obviously a bit older now, but he still has that bit of quality. Yeah, about I can watch them at one stage. Can't remember down there so many times, but where the ball just comes from, and he just back heels the ball, and then volleys like a thirty yard, forty yard cross your ball. You're just there looking, wow! Did he really? He's, do, he, did you really just do that? Yeah, he's he's a serious player, but um, legs aren't really on his side at the moment. Yeah. And I think he'll even admit that himself. He gets a lot of stick off the Rovers fans, and he gives the. Oh, he those. gives plenty back. That's what I'm saying. Uh, that book, that, controversial. That character. book signing is still on at the squares the next week. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, uh, he's a controversial character, but you need that sometimes. You know what I mean? That that yeah. bit of banter, but uh, I think that's why he's off Twitter. He's the Rovers fans, but there you go. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, lastly, then the race for third is um, all done. Now. Yeah, it's another one of those that's kind of like the pressure's been taken off with the way they. Uh, the way the other uh, results in the cups are gone because oh, for, uh, Waterford guaranteed, guaranteed Europe, yeah. European football as well, so yeah. it's the perfect result because uh, I mean scenario because it would have been so cruel on Waterford after that brilliant start if they didn't make Europe and at the same time Rovers have played such good football particularly at the second half of the season pretty much been one of the most informed teams in the league. It's funny because you go back 
maybe about eight weeks. Yeah, like it was. About, there was two or three. Maybe real, a bit more. Maybe ten. There was two at the start, and then it settled off, and then it went back again. But two real periods. But to me, and it was of real intense pressure, saying manager must go. Yeah. I like. I mean, like killings for it almost. Yeah, I remember uh, we were at that. The the last game probably was the the Bowls game at home, yeah. and Bradley out was just ringing out. Yeah, in that game, and that was when Owen Stokes scored. So yeah. it was a while back. It was, uh, I, I couldn't put a time frame on it now, but it wasn't that long but ago. But it was like twice, two big, pre- yeah, yeah. two big. It wasn't like one that just fell away and that was it. Like, and then still, they've been. I'm pretty myself. They've been one of the most informed D- Dundalk side because they've been so good. But they've, out of the rest, they've been the most informed team. To me, again, they're lacking a Hooban or a Cummins, and if they get Jesus, that, he can't be in all the teams. But this is what I'm saying is is if they had an out and out goal scorer and I know Carr got two or you want to take one away from him, but Carr for me he's one of these players he just holds on he holds on to the ball for too long and um he's very skillful and he's a good player. But I don't think he's the answer that Rob was fancy. No, you not, need someone who's gonna bang that guy. He's not your more. your out and out striker. I think he'll work very well if you had a hoop a hoop on it's almost given the stereotype. Someone like that. Just to or be, call it Graham Cummins. Yeah, to just that being demanded. I actually seen a rumor that Cummins is rumored to go there. Yeah, I think that would be a very good move for them. For, for I think he would do quite well there. Thirty one though by that stage. Yeah, just, but like he'll get the, get the like that's a young squad. He'll get the best bit of experience out of them. Um, Maybe as I said, I don't think Cummins is a bad player. Um, at yeah, all. no, he's a good player. Um, he's second I, in the. I, I think he would fit perfectly into that system. I think he would really get the best out of because you have so many. So many good players. I like even Watts back was playing good football. Oh, he was dictating that yeah, game, yeah. didn't he? And uh, you know, so many people were going on with Bastian Heary being the best midfielder in the league, and this that. You know, Watts bar that one game against Rovers, probably. And I think he he might have had a couple of games before that, but after that, then, you know, after the whole Bradley out, he he's been he's been, he's been, been phenomenal for the best player. Yeah, yeah. You know, just in terms of dictating the game, Ronan Finn looks like he's back to his best as Jones, well. Yeah. Um. You know, Dan Carey scoring goals and uh, Gary Shaw had a brief period when Graham Burke left uh, where he was scoring goals and he won a couple of games for them. So it's just a matter of, for for Rover's sake, you know, they did the right recruitment in the summer. There's no, there's no reason why they can't finish second next season if they did the right recruitment. Yeah, I still think Dundalk's squad are gonna dominate next year. If Dundalk in the morning, you'd fancy Dundalk to, to win the league again. But I think you, I think Cork will have, as you said, will Cork would have a right good struggle down. They're probably regrouping, probably well, financially they might. They well, that's what I mean. They have to struggle. Was, they're, they're that's what I mean by the finance. But so. you look at Rovers, who we've just spoke about. You look at Bowes, even Pats with a new manager, Waterford. Maybe if they get a bit of, you know, they did very good business last summer. On the low market, particularly if they can get a ride like that, is a real good battle for that first. Uh, like probably to knock up probably a little step, but second, it's good few teams there that could do could be quite a battle. I think for you're it. pushing it a little bit in terms of Pats and um, Bows, but you know you ne- you never know in football. So you know I'm not totally ridiculing what you're saying, but just for me, I I, I wouldn't see it this uh, so soon if Bows went into the season finishing it like now next year maybe but it's gonna be the only reason I'm saying that Rovers could finish above Cork is that because well, they're coming out and saying that they'll have to have cutbacks I don't see the likes of maybe Kieran Sadler who's been very frustrated this season not that he's came out and said it but you I'd, can see I'd be surprised if he's still at Cork next season yeah and then you know obviously Cummins is being uh, linked with you know Rovers you know Rovers have money they didn't sell Graham Burke for nothing yep they, Bizzuno. when did they get the money for Bazuno? I imagine when he that, goes. When he goes, I imagine. Okay, well they have that backed up, so if they do need to take a loan, they have that money there yeah. too. So there's no reason why they can't come out now and say, you know, have a right go at Dundalk. Like they'll. I see Rover signing something big in the summer. Yeah, but you know, statement. you know, with you know, Andy O'Brien never really got going this year. I didn't think he didn't it made a real difference at all. You know, Rovers fans may tell me different, but any game I was at, I didn't think he was great. And one of the games he got sent off for a stupid tackle on some winger on Pats, I can't remember who it was, but it was just stupid. And he got sent off and they ended up losing that game. And that was another game where Bradley Out was being sunk. Yeah, true, Gabs. 
like when you look at the the Rover season, derbies they've been demolished. In them. <laughs> you're look if you're making a plan for next season and what for improvement, that's the first thing you'll say, isn't it? Yeah, it's just you know, again, I t- we touch on you know clubs being nice to us and you know they in in retrospect, you know, the start of the season wasn't amazing, but in terms of t- the fans have always been nice when I, when we went down. Yeah. I've been in amongst the crowd when when they've been playing and you know. People are all about getting interviews after the game and stuff like that, and they're all, you know. So I have to say, huge respect to them as well. And you know, they're they're building a good young side there too. You got to remember Bolger, Bazunu, all these, you know, young lads, uh, Brandon Cavanagh as well. So all these young fellas there, you know, trying to get into that team. You mix it in with some big guys, and if they can get someone big in, you know, you're, you know, that they have the makings of a very good squad Absolutely. there, and if they can hold on to the players. I don't, as I say, I don't think they'll push Dundalk uh, fully to the title, but I think they're in with a good chance of, of finishing second, in my yeah, opinion. Absolutely, you know, and absolutely. And, you know, Cork fans might argue that, but, you know, it'll depend on who they recruit as well. It's all about really who comes out, you know, uh, 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 as the title winner in the transfer market. You know, Dundalk, you know, they add someone else into that. Do you know what I mean? Because they have their back now, their owners now too. So mm-hmm. there's so much to, to 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 look forward to in the summer in terms of transfers and stuff like that. And I'm actually quite excited about it. Uh, but my beloved Charles, I went to see Here them against Drogheda, and they lost. And they had two players sent off in the first half. Mm. And you said you weren't going to jinx it, didn't you? Well, <laughs> it was the first time I was back in Talca in. 10 years I think Jesus a long time I've been abroad and I've lived elsewhere and stuff like that but it was a it was a nice touch of uh, nostalgia um, you know because we used to go there with my dad and my brother and my cousin and my uncle my granda we all used to go so it was, a, it, was a, it was a brilliant day out and I went with my cousin and it just kind of brought back a lot of memories and you know but then after 20 minutes a player gets sent off and then we got another player sent off and he broke that fella's leg I think and uh, yeah, but somehow we managed to get the extra time and then lose on penalties. So massive credit there. I do think sacking Harry was a bit unfair. Uh, you know, a lot of people came out after him and was like, you know, fair play for the job he did and you, you tried to give your all for the club. Yeah, it seemed a bit harsh, I have to say. Yeah. Um, I haven't really got too much to say about it because, you know, I'd be a bit of a plastic fan this year and I'm going to try and change that next season. So, but it's hard because we try to go to games to, you know, to accommodate this channel and accommodate the show. And it's hard to get to get to the games because you have to go to the games that you know kind of mean more in the Premier Division. And that's why ideally we put out a tweet today saying we're looking for more contributors because we want to kind of mix around the, the league as well in the Division One. A lot of people give a stick saying we don't do a lot for the Division One, but it's you don't understand how hard it is. You know, between editing videos and getting guests on, and then getting to games from work and so on. There's there's so much that goes into it that sometimes I think you guys don't really understand, and I get that. That's fine, but we are trying to you know build and expand things. So if you do think you're interested, or whatever, do yeah, drop us a message. Drop us up. Or even if you want to come in on the show like this now, and you want to have a ch- chat with us about the about your team or you want to have a chat about the League of Ireland in general um, do get, get in touch with us uh, in regards to that and then uh, yeah I think that's been kind of everything. yeah just the tonight's games have just come in there but Bray, Bray back a couple of days do we I'm we sure, touched on do, it, do we yeah. touch on these both yeah. against yeah, I'm waffling back a couple of days for Derry just to summarise Bray 2-1 victory and 1-1 one, one with Sligo and Pats yeah I'm also doing Sligo and Bows even I'm also doing a um Charity run on the day of the cup final with uh, Paul Skinner, uh, Dean Clark, Shane Supple, Stephen O'Donnell, and I think there's one more person. It's in association with the PFA. I he contacted me today, but uh, if you guys could uh, send in a little donation if 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 you like, uh, you want to do that before the cup final on the day, and then obviously we'd be down at the cup final to watch the women's game and the men's game. Uh, we'll do more in regards to the cup final next week on. Uh, I suppose we'll call it our cup preview fun, show. Cup final countdown. Do you know what we should do? You've got FIFA 19, don't you? I do. Yeah, do you know what we do? We'll have a little simulation game where I play you uh, and we'll flip a coin and see who's, who's what team. Actually, 
you guys let us know in the comments who you want us to be. <laughs> you want me to be Cork or, or do you want John to be Cork? Or you need to let us know and we'll do it that way. Um, so we'll build up a bit of anticipation for the game. It'll be a bit of crack. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to now next week. Yeah, there's, there's still there's still bits there to be excited about. And uh, yeah, as always, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Johnny, I'll let you take it away. Talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.